Şimdi ekrana geçeceğim. Ekrana ayda gidelim kardeş. I know exactly why. It's not worth it. These were the very words of Socrates during his trial. Yes, Socrates, the man to whom we all are identity as philosophers today. A great teacher who produced marvelous students like Plato, who in turn produced Aristotle, and many more. A great teacher but was accused of corrupting the minds of the youth by getting them to think critically about their decisions minds now make it up. and of worshipping gods other than those dear to the city of Athens. Checking through the pages of knowledge in a bookstore one day, I pondered on how these sages, or Socrates and these other sages, are prominent until now. For centuries, their words reverberate and their thoughts are ever relevant. Has it ever dawned on you what their secrets could have been? Unfortunately, in our present age, some of us would rather risk the solidity of work for mere popularity. We have turned our gaze towards worldly desires of recognition and applause. But those philosophers who are truly lovers of wisdom do not patronize this. They will always consider such intellectual endeavors to benefit others rather than pursuing selfish ambitions. They would rather pursue truth, no matter how arduous. Beauty in the midst of garbage and goodness in an environment of corrupting evil. Despite all these sweet sounding words, allow me to ask you, is the world still in need of great thinkers? Thinkers who prioritize authenticity over ambitions. Thinkers who may not have earth-shaking ideas that can make a difference for a better world. Thinkers who in their silence can amplify words of wisdom and bring order amid noise and chaos. Thinkers who value the proper use of freedom and would refrain from any oppression that would put an end to it. Thinkers like these. Thinkers who are careful of mere sophistry and are ready to serve their community. Thinkers who, may, who are not contented being unshared philosophers but are always compelled to make a stand for the rest of humanity. And so, my fellow philosophers, cannot we be co-journeyers in this road less traveled? A path of enlightenment that is not only for our own sake, but also for the sake of our neighbor, an image of God to be loved. I know that I may not be as convincing as Socrates. Or am I as illustrious as his successors? But my dear friends, I plead to you today, speaking on behalf of the world, a world that will continue to be enveloped by darkness, 
if thinkers would not act to make a change. A kind of change that one day marked a historical milieu. That one day, in the public square, an unattractive man who claimed that the only thing that he knew was that he knew nothing, asked, what kind of life should one live? It is time to re-examine ourselves. Is my life worth living? Is our life worth living to build or rebuild our communities as philosophers? Socrates' words remain a challenge for all of us, for it demands a life guided by reason. Reason for the purpose of serving humanity and consider that each of us is connected. As Paul has written in his epistle to the Romans, for if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. Oh, for we shall all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, Every knee shall bend before me, and every tongue shall give grace to God. So that each one of us, you and me, shall give an account of himself to God. And how can we praise God if we are self-absorbed? How can we praise God if we forget that there is a community depending on us. A community whose feet Jesus asked us to wash. In our philosophizing, have we considered or have we thought of the poor who are impoverished in wealth and in spirit? Have you heard the whispers of those in crisis searching for answers for the meaning of life? Have I looked into the eyes, the windows to the soul of the victims of hatred and division? Have we considered the oppressed and the ostracized because of race religion, gender, and origin? Have you listened to the cry of an unborn infant whose existence and dignity are not different from yours? Have I experienced the importance of the planet Earth, our common home, who shelters me and you like a mother. Have we rejoiced, appreciated the gift of wisdom, and acknowledged our limitations as creatures of the divine being, from whom we came and to whom we must return? And if St. Dominic de Guzman were alive today, he might even ask us, Have you clothed yourselves with humility rather than find darkness? Have you armed yourselves with prayer rather than a sword? These are just but a few questions we need to be mindful of when we fill 
us Christ. Because whenever we study the wisdom handed down to us from age to age, there already are people waiting for the fruits of our studies and contemplations. Waiting for the day that we will stand tall for them and wholeheartedly serve them. So if we accept this calling as philosophers, we must also look forward to the community entrusted to us. For a true lover of wisdom does not glorify himself. He goes a step ahead of everyone in search of learning to lead them to the true, the good, the one and the beautiful, which perfections are found in no other than God. That same God became part of this human community. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And He made us realize that life is worth living if and only if we lead our community to Him. So, dear philosophers, let me ask you again, is your life worth living? Is your life worth living?